Good evening. Welcome to tonight's festivities. Tonight we're going to honor a coach and his players who practiced hard, played hard, and dedicated themselves to the pursuit of high school championship. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a moment in time known as Title Town Lincoln View High School, year 1962. First, though, let's all stand and bow our heads to take a moment of silence in remembrance of the following players and manager who have since passed away. Dean Hearn, Bob Johns, Denny Somerset, John Wilkin, and Dan Shoemaker, manager. Thank you. You may be seated. If we have any Lancers who are related to those special student athletes I just mentioned who are no longer with us, can you please stand and be recognized at this time? So if you're related to Dean Hearn, Bob Johns, Denny Somerset, John Wilkin, and Dan Shoemaker, could you please stand and be recognized if anyone out there is related to those people? Thank you. The year 1962, the date Saturday, May 26, was a day that put this little school on the map as they became the first school in Van Wert County and Linkview High School to win a state championship. In 1962, each championship team was awarded one trophy to display at their prospective high school. And as you look at the trophy table, you will see that's been proudly displayed ever since for 55 years. Back then, players were not awarded any medals like we do today. However, today we are going to make up for that. Today, all of the players you see before me will be receiving an official Ohio High School Athletic Association state championship medal as they are given out at the current state championships. The inscription on the back of the medal reads 1962 Class A state champions. It is with great pleasure and great honor I, that I introduce to you the Lincoln View 1962 Boys State Championship baseball players. At this time, Mr. Greg Leith, Lincoln High School Athletic Director, will now award the championship medals to each baseball player, I will call your name, as they defeated Baltimore Liberty Union High School for the zero. We're going to start with our seniors in 1962. Ralph Snyder. John Lay. Our last senior that year, Phil Overholt. Dave Overholt. Ralph Eversall. Hayden Reese. Steve Rhodes. Rex Roth. We do have some players that could not be with us this evening. I will announce their names and they will also be receiving their medal. Terry Adams. Jerry Kearns. Did we miss Larry Stutz? Oh, I'm sorry. Larry Stutz also is going to be wearing his medal too. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mike Wallach. Ed Conrad. Dave Keel. Dennis Kimmy. 
Larry, I just wanted you to wait a little bit longer to get your medal, so uh, hopefully you forgive me that. Um, unfortunately, head coach Lee White, who is still living today in Las Vegas, Nevada, could not be, be able to make it here, but um, he, he also sent some uh, regards, and Ralph Snyder will be speaking on his regards at this point in time. I believe uh, I have a half an hour to do this, so if you people don't mind, I know you folks in Wayne Trace would rather play ball. But anyhow, I do have a uh, few paragraphs from Coach White, who lives out in Las Vegas, Nevada. He says, I am sorry I'm not able to be here with you as you honor the 1962 state baseball champions. I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Jeff Snyder and his staff along with Mr. Brad Minnenall and his staff for their part in recognizing this baseball team. Maybe high school is barely a year and a half old when this group won the state tournament. Little did we know at that time they were building the foundation for what is now the Lancer Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, standing here are members of the 1962 Ohio High School State Baseball Champions. Each of them made contributions to the success of that season. They forever will be my boys. May God bless you in this great country. Also, Merry Christmas to all. So today also is Coach White's birthday. He's now 85. And I talked to him today, and he wanted to be here so bad, uh, it was unbelievable. But due to medical problems and his age and that, he is no longer able to travel. Also at this time, I'd like to thank the administration, the athletic administration, and the school board for this nice venue tonight. We appreciate it very much. Now, I had to talk pretty hard to Coach White to get the scorebook back to Lincoln View High School. The book's never been back since we won the state. And uh, he's pretty reluctant to let it go because it's pretty close to his heart. But tonight, We'd like to give the scorebook to the Lincoln View Athletic Department to put in a trophy case. So at this time, we'd like to have the baseball team come forward and Jeff Snyder to accept the scorebook from the state championship baseball team. So at this time, John and uh, Phil will get the book. And if the rest of the team will come up, we'd like to have uh, Jeff Snyder come out and accept it on behalf of the Lincoln View state champs. Thank you. We had a few baseball players down to the, uh, to the room to uh, talk with us a little bit and wanted to know if we had any stories to tell. Well, not really, but I think if anyone in the era back in the 1960s know anything about the baseball teams in any school, you drove your cars to your opponent's place where you played the baseball games. Well, I think we might have been the only team to drive ourselves to the state baseball tournament. There was the coach and three other people drove our own personal cars with baseball players in, in the car to our state baseball tournament. Now, as a former administrator today, absolutely not. <laughs> if you look at the liability, are you kidding me? 16, 14, 18-year-old kids in a car? And I don't think many of us had ever been to Columbus over maybe one time. So it was really, it was really an experience for all of us and uh, things I'm sure as you get older, the stories get better, believe me. We've had a few tonight. But anyhow, uh, that's about all I have to say. I really appreciate you people coming out tonight and also for Wayne Trace being courteous, having this program at the half between the two ball games. I appreciate it very much, thank you. Before I let them go, I, I, I want to reminisce a little bit in time. So I have, did you know facts? Did you know that, um, in, that before this, this group came together, three schools, Vandell Rockets, York Dukes, and Hogan Jackson formed in 1960. 
And this was the second year of Lincoln Local Schools. And what an unbelievable opportunity for us to have this banner behind us. Thank you for that. Their record that year is 14-2-1, and, and they had a tie against Gomer. Their first game of the season, they tied Gomer High School, which I'll come back to that in a little bit. There's only two divisions back then, Class AA and Class A. For the season, this group hit .222. Gosh, they couldn't hit very well at that point in time. <laughs> however, however, the leading hitter that year was Phil Overhold at, at .388. Dean Hearn at 349 and Bob Johns at 300. Doubles were led by Ralph Snyder with seven. Bob Johns led in triples with four and RBIs at 21. Phil Overholt led the team in steals with 20 and, and Ralph had 16, Ralph Snyder. Dean Hearn, and our key was pitching and defense. Dean Hearn led the way with pitching. He was nine and zero, had 60 innings of pitching. Again, they only played 17 games. Struck out 76 batters in 60 innings. Gave up 33 runs, walked 15, and only allowed 12 runs the whole season. 12 runs. Second was Phil Overholt. He pitched 37 innings, was 3-1-1, one, and one, struck out 37, and only walked eight people the whole season. In the tournament of eight games in a the tournament, they outscored their opponent 39-12. to 12. I, I thought they couldn't hit. 39-12 to 12 in tournament. They rallied three times in tournament to come back and move on in the tournament play. In the regional final game, they won it in 12 innings, 12 innings to beat um, Colonel Crawford to head to the state final four. Coach had a meeting earlier in the season before it started, and he had a vision that could go all the way. And he felt they had the best pitching staff of, the, he thought, the four quality teams in the area, Gomer, Coldwater, Rockford, and Lincoln View. He really felt that, that the pitching was going to lead that, that team, and it sure did. He talked to me about catcher Dave Keel. He was so good at reading batters that he knew the weaknesses of that, of that batter, which helped our pitchers tremendously, and it shows, sure showed that in the tournament play. It was interesting that they, they, be, they tied Gomer 2-2, two to two, but then they beat them in the sectional game with a 4-3 to three rally to beat them. So that came back, and that was a huge game for this group. Um, he also talked to me about that was the, the, really the true game. He, he, uh, he breathed a sigh of relief after beating them because uh, they were very fundamentally sound. He said at the Coldwater game, Ralph Snyder stole many bases that day and was having fun with the pitcher and the catcher and also the rest of the players. Um, in the uh, regional play, they played Archbold. And Archbold, that was, they played in Deschler, Ohio. For, uh, for that game. That was a regional game. It rained so hard, the, term, the tournament director called the game and they drove back the next day to, to beat them. And it was worth every drive back. They played Conneaut Row in the, in the state semis. And I asked Coach, what did you do to prepare for that game? He goes, nothing. We just got in our cars and drove up and played a game. There was no technology, there's no huddle, there's no filming. We just went and played a baseball game and we won three to one. Next up was the Baltimore Liberty Union. And he, Coach said that he heard they were already sent up to celebrate the state championship in uh, Baltimore, Ohio. But they didn't know about the Lancers. During that game, Coach said that Dave Keel slapped Coach in the, in the leg after about three innings in the game and said, Coach, we got him. Don't worry about it. That's what he told me. Ralph Eversold during that game was in the first baseman's head so much that he told the first baseman that that Ralph Snyder's gonna bunt to get on, and he did, and they said he's gonna steal second, and then he did. He goes, after that, that kind of changed a little bit of the game and their mindset. He goes, the players cared about one another, they really loved each other, and they loved the game of baseball. And he says, they're still my boys. And what a birthday present for him to be here, be not here physically today, but I know that he's, he's thinking about them as we speak right now. In 1960, Convoy Union played Baltimore Liberty Union, the same team that we did, just a couple years later, and they lost. So this time it took the boys from the west side of the county to get the job done. Thank you for getting the job done. Just a couple more facts that did you know, and then we'll finish up this evening. The team that they played in the state championship game, they won the state in 1960, they won it in 61. They tried to win in 62, but that didn't happen. They lost in the regionals in 63, and they won again in 64. 
That's how good a team and program they had, but they didn't know about the Lancers that showed up that particular day. The day that Lincoln beat them in 1962, they've won 46 in a row baseball games. And that record still holds today, 55 years later, but we got the trophy and they don't. So congratulations, guys. I did get to speak to a member on that losing team today from Baltimore Liberty Union, and I asked him about the Lancers. He said they were very well coached, very well disciplined team, they had very good athletes, and we thought we were a very good hitting team, but they shut us down. Flat out, they beat us that day. Uh, he also told me they took a bus to the game. Our, our guys drove. I don't know if that's a new thing that we need to start doing, but we're not. But he said, last thing I need to tell you, to be a champion, you must beat a champion. And that day, Lincoln U did beat us, and they deserve to be the 1962 state baseball champions. So in conclusion, with that season, Let's all give them one more round of applause and thank them for their success to represent our fine community. Before we conclude tonight's ceremony, we have one more gift to give you. Mr. Eric Fishpaul, Lincoln High School's baseball coach, we're presenting you each an official Lincoln High School baseball hat to wear proudly of your alma mater in remembrance of that special season of 1962. If anyone in our crowd this evening would like to meet and greet these guys here to my left, um, at halftime of the Varsity Boys game, in the lecture hall, please come over, see them, they'll be in there, and would like to reminisce. In, my, in conclusion, it's my great pleasure to say thanks to the Lincoln Board of Education, the Lincoln Athletic Department, and the Lincoln Athletic Boosters for putting this great ceremony on. At this time, this concludes tonight's ceremony, and we'll get ready for a basketball game. Thank you, Wayne Trace.